All right, welcome back. This is my 33rd video. So what I'm about to show you is an old Batman episode. It happens to be episode number 33, and then I'll explain it afterwards. All right, so that's basically a short 33 second video. Uh, and like I said, since this is my 33rd video, I just thought I'd, I'd pick up on it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of break down that video and then give you information on some of the things they talked about. All right, so just like I stated, it was Bat Batman episode number 33. So that 33 is a significant number. It's basically a master number. Um, I'll, I'll give you some later on on that. But the name of the episode was called Fine Finny Fiends. All right. So that's FFF, -F -F, which equals 666. If you notice my numerology uh, video, I did uh, something on numerology with the magic squares when I tell you how to make the sigils with the magic squares. There are only really nine real numbers. Zero is really means nothing, which is uh, why they say uh, God is love, love is nothing. That's why in tennis, when you have a score of zero, they always say blank to love or love 40 or love 30 or something like that. Love is always nothing or zero. It doesn't mean nothing how we come to think of it. It means no thing. So you can't, once you start to define it or uh, define God, that's when, it's, that's when you limit it, limit the, uh, the source. All right, but if you notice, F falls under the number six. So we have, they did that on purpose, 666. And uh, just just to go on to point out, F O X is Fox, so you know that network is a six 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 network, so on and so forth. All right, um, Batman really is a Nubis character. I really don't think it's based off of um, a bat, actually. So if you want to Google Anubis, Anubis is basically the guy of the underworld. Uh, some of the mythologies, Osiris replaced him, but really he's the one who uh, guards graves and cemeteries, and uh, he he guides the souls from physical life to the uh, spiritual world and uh, weighs them and see if they're worthy of which way they're going to go, whether they're going to incarnate or go on to the source. He's also known as the embalmer. He supposedly helped embalm uh, Osiris's, Osiris when he died. So basically, three, three goals of an uh, embalmer is the sanitiza sanitization, presentation, and preservation, or sometimes restoration. So basically, he cleans the body, gets ready to present the body, and uh, restores it to his original light set. So it basically, it's, it's an allegory for basically getting you ready to go back to home to where your source. All right. Uh, I don't know if you heard in the video. You can also Google this on your own and watch. There's several people who Google who uh, taped it and showed that same video. But um, so you can Google it again if you couldn't hear it. But one of the things it said was that Batman's grandfather founded the Skull and Crossbones. And you notice he had a Y on his shirt on that picture. So it basically, it's a, it's a secret uh, society at uh, Yale. Uh, both the Bushes belong to it, uh, John Kerry. As I tell you, politics is not real. I mean, John Kerry and Bush, they're basically uh, secret society mates. So, and uh, even nowadays, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the dude, uh, Barack Obama, his uh, advisor, he has the same advisor as George Bush, uh, Zbigno uh, Brzezinski, so it's, it's, it's fake. It's just as real as wrestling. If you like, if you believe wrestling is real, then uh, so is Democrat against uh, Republican. All right, so if you look up the um, skull and crossbones, they sometimes put this little saying next to it. It's a Latin saying, memento mori. It basically means remember you are mortal and remember you must die, all right? So for all my uh, Game of Thrones fans, I did a video on Game of Thrones. Two of the episodes are named, one of them is named Valor Morgulis and Valor Doheris. It basically loosely translates to, um, uh, we, we all must die and we all must serve. So it's basically saying, uh, although we all must die for, uh, for the, whenever you see the word morgue or mortal or more, or mortality, you're talking about like rigor mortis, you're talking about death or stillness. So the, the first one is pretty much is we all must die. It's the same as uh, the Latin, the memento mori. And uh, Valor de Harris is what you're supposed to respond with, which means, well, basically we gotta serve for now until we do die. That's basically what the whole thing is about. So that's from Game of Thrones. Uh, I've also brought, uh, mentioned in that same video, if you haven't seen it, about what, what uh, all these fairy tales are about. You always have a knight in shining armor 
who's trying to save a princess in the tower and uh, with a horse. So usually the horse, a female horse is a mare. So what you're dealing with is a knight and a mare. So what you have is a nightmare, which is your dreams. This is all about decoding your dreams. Uh, so if you're not keeping your dream journal, check out that video also. All right, so that's what the dark night is rising is all it really about. We talking about your melanin rising, that darkness, that dark matter. Um, so that's what the term dark night rising is. Um, you know, the, the subconscious and so on and so forth because we're dealing with uh, the underworld. We're dealing with Anubis, which is also sometimes related to Sirius in the sky. All right. I'm going to break out the, break down the skull bones, I mean the crossbones in a minute. Let's go to Gotham. If you've ever been curious of what Gotham came from, they tell you it came from like a, a city in England or something like that called Gatham. Gat meaning goat, ham meaning home. So you have words like Gatham and Chatham. Uh, like I'm from Chicago, they have a, a town, an area in Chicago called Chatham. So I'm pretty sure Chatham is in other states and cities also. But it basically translates to home for goats. So what you want to know is study uh, the difference between a goat and a sheep. Because remember the Old Testament is all about being sheep and being led by a shepherd. But sheep are basically stupid animals and they're very dependent on each other. They're scared to roam and be independent. Goats are the opposite. They're very intelligent. So what this is really telling you, that New York City, which just happens to be uh, the, the uh, center of uh, the United States sometimes, um, <clears throat> is basically the home for the intelligence. So we're dealing with intelligent beings and so forth. Uh, you know, it's a Masonic thing about riding a goat. So we're really talking about goats or Capricorn. We t we, everything is about darkness. When is Capricorn down? That's, that's Saturn rules Capricorn or Satan. So that's where you get the, you know, the word Capricorn actually means horny goat or horned goat. That's where the devil became... Uh, that's what I got the devil looking like having horns and uh, being red because we deal on your body I told you Satan is your is your spine or that root chakra, which is red So, you know, that's your sacrum, which is red it makes it sacred So Satan is in a sacred area on your body, but I told you in, in the winter time it's, it's when the it's less light from the Sun because Jesus represents the Sun astrologically and uh, Capricorn represents the darkest part where there's no sunlight until he rises three days later and until he's reborn again when he passes over the equator in around uh, March or Aries. That's why he becomes the lamb or the, the, the sacrificial lamb, Jesus does. So we're dealing with that dark subconscious energy. So um, the word corn means um, horn. So names like Cornelius means the horn, the one. So you can look up that word, what Cornelius means. Cornucopia, you probably seen that on Thanksgiving. It's a big old horn, a wheat, uh, a big old horn shaped thing with, with uh, fruit and, and vegetables spilling out of it. So look up Cornucopia so you can check, you know, etymology. Start learning these names. So corn means horn or horny. So, you know, goats uh, had a bad name because sex, sex used to be a taboo. So, you know, whenever a goat is known to be real, real horny when they're in heat and they get, they got real, real, get real buck. So that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with that, that uh, home for goats or horny or the horned one, that dark energy. So we're dealing with, once again, we're trying to transform this and we get that dark night to rise from the, from the Satan or the seat of your uh, spine up to your pineal gland. Why the number 33 on the 33rd episode? Because Jesus performed 33 miracles. He crossed or got crucified at the age 33 and was buried in the place of the skull. So we're back on that skull and crossbones. So the place of the skull. So here we go. Calvary or Golgotha translate to place of skull. So they go to uh, Bible verses. Mark is uh, chapter 15. Luke chapter 23. John chapter 19. Matthew chapter 27. Um, so we're dealing with that. Uh, Golgotha is your uh, brain. And the 33 bones is how old it took him before he died. So these are the breakdown of your bones and your spine. You got 33 bones. Alright, so that's why 33 is a master number. So you also remind you on that Beyonce video when she self-deified herself, they, they let, uh, they did, she did a ritual, on a Super Bowl ritual, where they shut the lights off for 33 minutes. Also Queen Latifah and Madonna at the Grammys, they uh, married 33 gay and straight couples. So that 33 is a master number, they know what they're doing with that energy. So this is an old, uh, I did an old video on this um, on another channel with the left and right brain, 10% to 90%. So that's what we're dealing with, with the Lucy movie that's coming out. Um, that's what it's talking about, paying tithes. Tithe means 10%. So look at my paying tithes video to get an understanding of your brain. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to balance everything out. All right. So I broke down the 33, the Anubis, the Gotham. So let's go back to the skull and crossbone. If you look at that symbol, 
Uh, they say right now it's a symbol for poison, but uh, what you're dealing with is you got the, the bones that they use for the cross are actually femur or thigh bones. So what did I tell you in my other video? That uh, the thigh is a euphemism for the penis. So you got to look at my, I believe it's the Moses video I was talking about this. Because uh, when Moses was dying, or was it Abraham? Don't quote me on it, but uh, uh, he had uh, his uh, next in line put his hand under his thigh. Basically told him to grab his genitals and made an oath. Because I told you that's a euphemism, just like uh, to know or knowledge is a euphemism for sex in the Bible. Uh, so a thigh is a euphemism for uh, the penis. Uh, just like when uh, Jacob wrestled with the angel to get his name Israel, he had to sacrifice his lower nature, which so he threw his hip out of socket and the sinew got pulled out of, they talking about his penis. So remember his thigh got out of socket. socket. So look at the Jacob uh, story when he fought uh, Jacob. So Jacob's ladder is just pretty much your 33 bones in your back. That's your skull. I mean your um. I told you that's your spine. So he, he that's Jacob's ladder is your spine. And he became Israel, which is your illuminated pineal gland. Because remember, he called it pineal land or pineal land. So he talking about your pineal gland. Same story over and over again. And you can't deny it. I'm giving you a lot of information. You can cross check it and look it up yourself. All right. So whenever you see thigh and then they're talking about your penis. So that's what this whole symbol is really about. It's really just like all the stories in the Bible and all these allegories is about. Uh, your, your, your struggle between your lower nature and your higher nature because basically your lower nature which is your, your penis you got your penile gland going against your pineal gland so you got your north pole uh, going against your south pole alright so that's what Capricorn and, and they, became, they made that the bad part or the darkest part uh, of, the, of the time of the year and also you know that's midnight when it comes to 24 hour clock uh, what else I want to talk about um, Satan, I talked about that, uh, I don't want to leave anything out. Thigh bone, because you know, they also say the skull and crossbone stands for, um, Golgotha, so I already talked about Jesus, and, um, da -da -da, almost died. We can go down to the numerology, and if I think of something else, I'll come up with it. So, all double numbers are usually, uh, what they call, uh, master numbers, but really only three true master numbers. Anything past 33, like 44, 55, if they got that in a book, it's really just a, to round it off, they try to go up to 99, but only 11, 22, and 33 are really master numbers because anything over 9 is not a real number. So, just some quick I don't, I don't try to do too much math in my videos, um, but anything when you add 9 to it, it's going to become its own number. So, 9 plus 3 is actually 12, 1 plus 2 is 3, so you're back at 3. So, if you add 9 to 5, you're going to get 5 because 9 plus 5 is 14, 1 plus 4 is 5. So, 9 is the last complete number, all right. So anything above that 10 is just 1 plus 0, you're back to 1, okay? So with master numbers, you don't add them because 11 would, would naturally become 2, uh, 22 would come 4, so on and so forth, but you don't add them because they're master numbers. And I'll, I'll break down the master numbers in a little while. So biblically, 666 is actually 9. So 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18, 1 plus 8 equals 9. I told you in my other video that 9 equals completion, attainment, realization, and end of a cycle. Remember Moses wandered in the desert until he got to the wilderness of sin. It took him 45 days to get to the wilderness of sin. Uh, 45 is 4 plus 5, which is 9. So he completed a cycle in the, in the um, desert. He, after he got out of the desert, now he was, in, he was trying to deal with sin. Okay? Alright. So I just... Uh, Kind of put what two stand for because I told you you got 11, which is really two, 22 is really four, 33 is really six. But since they're a master number, you don't add them up. But two means division or opposites or desire. So that's when you get uh, <clears throat> you want things because you have two things to choose from. So it's either too hot or it's too cold, um, so on and so forth. So four is your manifested desire. So what you did in a three is really like did the work or the magic, and then four is when you manifest something, all right. So it's also manifested desire. So it's when your when your prayers are answered and physically you can see it. Uh, so it also symbolizes the world. So four or square or stand on your square. Six is balance. So it's when you when you when you balance perfect. Uh, that's what the six point star means. Uh, uh, man and woman balanced. It's also when your subconscious is balanced with your uh, conscious. So that's when your prayers truly get answered. Once you balance that out, that's when everything is answered. So that's why a man was made on the sixth day. But then you have to rest because now you have physical completion on seven. All right, so the master numbers 11 is the most psychic number. People under this number are spiritual messengers or illuminators, it's also a channel to the subconscious. So, this is when you have insight without rational thought. So, these are the dreamers, if you will. 
You know what I'm saying? These are people with those abstract ideas and shit. These people use that right brain at 90% that most of us don't use. So, you know, what you're dealing with is on the tree of life, the Kabbalah tree of life, is that hidden sephirah, which is actually the 11 sephirah, which leads you to the back, which is the dark side, your subconscious. Because remember, we, we trapped in the 10th sephirah, which is Malkuth, which is the physical kingdom. But you want to make it up and cross the desert, like I said in the Masonic video. But uh, that, that, that hidden sibling, which is Darth Vader in the Star Wars movie. So that dark side. So you want to bring your light. There's no point in having a flashlight in a lit room. You want to go with God. God said, let there be light. God is, the creator is in the darkness. So you don't want to go to the light. You want to go to the dark side because you really get to the source. All right, so 11 is a gateway. So to your subconscious. And on the tree of life is Doth or the 11th. So you've got the absolute sign, which is 11. So if you know anything about math, if you put a negative three and a positive three in absolute signs, they're equal to each other. So you make all things equal. There's no duality once you go into the dark side. You flip it on the side, you got the equal sign. So the absolute sign and the equal sign are the same thing. All things being equal. So it's no longer a negative is this and a positive is this. All things are equal. So no more duality. It has nothing to do with two anymore. One is one. That's what they're basically telling you. 22 is the most powerful number. So you got traits of the number 11 also, but basically that's the, that's the, that's the number of a master builder. So you're, this is when you uh, decode your dreams and you have those ambition dreams and you're able to really bring them to reality easier. So you're, you're that master magician or that master builder. Remember this matrix was built by a master builder called Yahweh in the Old Testament, which is yod heh vah -He, which is really just your GTAC or your, your DNA, those four proteins. So your body and your physical, everything in physical is built on the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So you also got the tarot cards, the major tarot cards, and the past on the Kabbalah Tree of Life. But the Hebrew alphabet, if you look at my matrix video on the Hebrew alphabet, the 3, 7, and 12, those are the numbers that run through the Bible all day. That's what made up this physical world that we're trapped in. Alright? Um, so you, you got... Um, it basically contains the seed, the inspirational insight, you know what I'm saying? That's what number 11 is with the, with the practicality and the methodical nature of the number four. So basically you have unlimited potential, um, which leads to discipline for a person. So that's what that uh, number 22 is about. Number 33 is the most influential number. It's all about universal love. So these are the Christ or the shamans or the people who are uh, actually practice what they preach and it's almost like they have no humanity left in them so they're usually the weird people or they get crucified or persecuted in most cases um, because um, they're basically so holy and they're only about their self and all that but they basically encompass both 11 and 22 so that's what makes them so uh, great and uh, makes them so influential they influence people but you know, it's almost like when you get a goody two shoe around you. You say you want somebody to be great and this, not the other, but you know, if you're not perfect, you, you get a, you seem to get a mirror around you, and you get. Um, I think some people resent goody two shoes for the most part. I always comment on people like, man, if Jesus did come back, a lot of you would be um, wouldn't even like him anyway. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let me make sure I broke everything down. I told you that that phrase from. Uh, the Game of Thrones video, Game of Thrones uh, episodes are the same as uh, the Latin one and what the skull and crossbones mean. Uh, talked about the numbers. Uh, talked about Jesus. Talked about Capricorn. So I do a video on Baphomet because you got to stop being afraid of these goat figures. Uh, Baphomet and Pan, the uh, deity Pan, where you get the word panic from. Um, but uh, Baphomet, um, you know, anytime you name uh, your children kids or you say you got kids, and then the people who watch your kids, if, if you have a, a, a sitter, you call them a nanny. Those are all goat terms. So we're dealing with intelligent uh, terms, uh, especially when you use animals. You don't say anything about no sheep when you're talking about your children. So you're using these goat terms. So no, no need to be afraid of uh, 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 these allegorical figures like Baphomet and Capricorn or the, 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 the fake devil they gave you with the, uh, the red devil with the horns and uh, the pitchfork. Now, that's just another trinity. That trinity is the opposite of the uh, trinity that's on top. And that's all the pitchfork came about for. So if you're into the Wiccan uh, religion or Wiccan magic or witch magic, they have the, the mother, the maiden, and the crone, or the virgin, the whore, and the, the old lady, something like that. But you basically just the three aspects of uh, God. So it's always a trinity, man, woman, child, so on and so forth. And the fourth is your manifestation. So I told you that's what four means. <clears throat> um, I think that's it.
So if I forgot anything, I'll repeat it in other videos. I like to cross-reference other videos to encourage you to watch them. So I mentioned the Hebrew alphabet, the matrix. I also mentioned the uh, Beyonce video when uh, she did the 33 light. The, uh, the lights was out for 33 minutes. Uh, I mentioned uh, my Game of Thrones because I broke down what a nightmare is and what because it's all about nights in that in that uh, show. You know the tower. Any any fairy tale with a tower, they talk about your back, your spine, and the the white lady in the tower is really your pineal gland or your illuminated pineal gland. Has nothing to do with race. And the dragon is always the bad guy. It's, if it's not a dragon, it's a snake in, in these allegories. It's really just your energy that you have to um, you have to tame. You don't have to kill. You don't want to kill the dragon. So that's why Shrek was such a good movie because they basically made the dragon real soft at the end. So um, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed.